Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, I have a brief announcement first. So the talk after this one, which was about building open source with open source, is actually cancelled. So the speaker had an accident and he will be here with us. But we have a replacement already. <laughs> so Olaf will talk about uh, Apache Big Talk, which is also building stuff uh, with open source. <laughs> So, uh, it's a very, very nice so, just so you know. Uh, so now I will introduce the next speaker. This is Dylan uh, Kuhn. And, uh, okay, it's another uh, talk about machine learning, but this time the database. So, please, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Frank Lascolin from Pivotal. And it's really a pleasure to be here this morning with you. Thank you for getting up early on a rainy Sunday morning to uh, join us here. I'd like to speak to you about Apache Madlib, which is an incubating project that they have now. And the topic is uh, in distributed in database machine learning for fun and fun. So I'd like to start with a couple of facts. The first fact is that um, machine learning and distributed systems can be fun. Uh, even for folks who are not necessarily attracted by complexity. Um, people come from various backgrounds to work on distributed systems and machine learning, not just PhDs in computer science. I don't have a PhD in computer science, for example. Um, so folks out there who are looking for interesting projects to work uh, in, um, I would encourage you to like look in this area, either this project or other projects that you work on here at Bodhi. Um, but you still have to earn a living. So um, fact number two is that if you look at every large commercial enterprise out there, they're using relational databases. They're using data which is arranged in relational form in some way, shape, or form. Um, so if you kind of combine, for those of you who don't know, that is the Wall Street Bowl. Um, so if you put those two together, this is the equation that you end up with, which is that um, fun plus money equals bad life. So that's the, you know, the area that I'd like to talk to you about today. Right. So in particular, the topics are, I'd like to talk about um, the journey to Apache for, um, for Madlib because it's not a new open source project, then look at in database machine learning in a little bit more detail. Talk about the architecture of um, MATLAB. And then talk about um, R, making R scalable. So MATLAB also has uh, R interface as well for folks who are interested in using R. Okay. So let's start with um, the journey to the Apache Software Foundation for Pivotal. And I'd like to start with a little bit of a history lesson. So this is sort of the history of Postgres as it started in the mid-80s um, by a fellow by the name of Michael Stonebreaker who developed Postgres at US Berkeley. Um, so this is a timeline sort of through to the present. I'll just pick out a couple of dates that I think are interesting on this um, timeline. One that I thought was interesting is that Postgres added support for SQL only about 10 years later in 1995. Um, I thought was interesting since SQL had been around since the 80s. Um, so in mid-2000, around 2005, there was a bunch of folks at a company called Greenplum who, who thought about all of that data inside of Postgres and is it possible to make a distributed version of that, to make a massively parallel processing database which is based on Postgres. Um, so they forked um, Postgres in the 8.2 uh, version around 2005 and built this massively parallel processing or MPP engine on top of Postgres. Um, that was a very uh, interesting and uh, profitable venture for them. Um, about six or seven years later in 2011, they realized that they had now all of this parallel computing capability within the database, within this MPP database, but they wanted to add a machine learning component to it. Right? So um, the idea is that you don't want to move the data out of the database 
operate it on operate on it in some kind of external format and move it back in. You want to do everything in database. Um, so that was the advent of uh, Madly, which was launched in 2011. So shortly after that, with the advent of Hadoop, um, the folks at um, at Greenplum and later Pivotal <coughs> said, "Why don't we take this massively processing parallel processing engine, um, swap out local storage, and add a excuse me distributed uh, Hadoop file system?" So take the capabilities of this MPP engine, bring it to the Hadoop ecosystem, and the advent of something called Hawk, which is now Apache Hawk, which you'll hear about later today in this uh, demo from my, from my colleague. Um, so if we fast forward now to 2015, all of these products, Green Plum, Hawk, and Badlib, have continued to develop, um, both with contributions from the academic community as well as commercial. Um, and these are all open source projects now. In particular, Hawk and Madlib are now Apache uh, integrating uh, projects. So as I said, um, Madlib is the result of a very interesting uh, collaboration with between industry and um, uh, industry as well as uh, academia. So the project was actually one of the key people involved was Joe Hellerstein from UC Berkeley. He was one of the first guys who actually thought about uh, in the in database machine learning, came up with an architecture to, to realize that. Along the way, we've had a lot of contribution from, Stan from Stanford, from University of Wisconsin, Madison, as well as University of Florida. So why, uh, why Apache? Why, why do we think that Apache Software Foundation is a good place to develop the product? Well, it's because ASF is really a great place to be. It is a place in which developers come together, work in a kind of collaborative way on software in open and uh, productive ways. Um, I think transparency is a really important part of ASF. So if you're going to have an open source project in Apache, you better share what your roadmap is. You better communicate with the community actively. Share your technical discussions on the user groups. Uh, and if you don't have that kind of transparency, you're certainly doomed as an open source project at uh, Apache. So the other interesting thing is that these technologies are getting so complex right now that it's important for the community to collaborate in order to build them. Um, it's fine for a few folks to be sitting quietly in a room to figure stuff out, but as these projects um, get more complicated, you want to scale them out and add capability to them, you really need a community. Right? So it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a good open source community to, to build uh, a good software product. So Pivotal has kind of taken that at, um, at heart. and. Effectively, all of the commercial products that were developed through Greenplum, including Greenplum Database, um, the Apache, the, uh, um, um, the SQL on Hadoop product, these have all been open sourced in the last um, last year or so. So all of the commercial data products have been open sourced, um, including uh, including that. Okay, just so a little bit of a history to. Madlib and where Madlib comes from. I'd like to give you go into a bit more detail on um, Madlib and talk about capabilities of Madlib as well as the architecture. Okay, so Madlib is about scalable in database machine learning. Um, it runs in database, as I said, in Postgres, Google Green in uh, Green Plum database, as well as Apache uh, Hawk. And the two kind of key things about Madlib to remember are um, scalability and performance. So if you have data that fits in memory on a single node, um, then you don't need uh, Madlib. There's lots of other solutions out there. Right? You can use R, you can use scikit-learn, um, you can use a wide variety of other open source um, projects. So if you want to do things at scale, and very, very large data sets. That's sort of what Madlib is um, designed for. The other thing is that um, 
you want to be performant um, in the sense that if you have a large data stat and you have a large cluster to run it on, you don't want it to run forever, right? So it needs to be um, implemented in such a way that even though you're working on large data stats, um, you get your results back in a reasonable amount of time. So these are the, the functions that exist currently within, um, within Madlib. As I said, it's a fairly mature library. There's something in the order of 35 to 40 principal functions or principal algorithms within uh, Madlib. This has been developed now over the last uh, you know, five or five or so years. So you get you see um, sort of the expected uh, algorithms in the area of supervised learning um, and unsupervised learning. Um, there's also a number of other support <coughs> modules. And in fact, this has been a focus of the recent development work because if you talk to any data scientist, they will tell you that a lot of the time that they spend is preparing the data, you know, doing feature extraction or what have you, um, in order to input it to a machine learning algorithm. So although like really the focus in people talking about machine learning, they're talking about the algorithms themselves. However, and I think um, the gentleman early on the thought chief Flank mentioned it as well, like a lot of work is kind of getting it ready, blue code and, and such. So we've started doing more in the area of support modules. In particular, we, in the last six months or so, we've added a whole host of matrix operations, as well as done things like um, path functions. And path functions are interesting for finding patterns uh, within, uh, within data sets. So the, the features of Madlib um, are better parallelism. I think that's a key thing. And Madlib is it's SQL based and it's designed to take advantage of this massively parallel processing uh, architecture in Greenplum database, as well as um, distributed computing capability within uh, within Hadoop. Better scalability, and by this I mean the algorithms scale as your data set scale. So you don't want to change your, your software as your data sets get bigger. So if you have um, you know, a small data set, you can do development on your laptop, you know, on, this, uh, on Postgres, for example. And then you can run that as well on, say, a hot cluster with 100 nodes. And the software hasn't changed. It's the exact same software that ran on your laptop that's running on a 100 node. Another key thing is predictive uh, accuracy. If you um, speak with data scientists, um, they don't like to sample data, right? Even if it's very large data sets, especially if you have dimensions with high cardinality, like user IDs and things like that. Um, if you want to group by those, machine learning by user ID, then even if you have a large data set, if you sample it, you can end up with sparse data. So the, uh, the idea is to operate on all of the data. So these are the supported platforms. As I mentioned, um, both Hawk, Greenplum Database, Postgres, obviously, are all open source. <laughs> um, so scalability. Um, I got a couple of charts. I have a couple of charts on scalability here. The way to read this one, so this is sort of scaling by cluster size, if you will. Um, so on the, on the x-axis, you have number of independent variables, and then on the y-axis is the execution time, right? So this is for linear regression on 10 million rows, and you can see in the top right-hand side there, if you have a if you have six segments, segments of worker node, um, it takes about 200 seconds. If you double the number of segments, so you come down to um, the red dot on the right, you can see that execution time is approximately half, about 100 seconds. If you double, double the number of worker nodes again to uh, 24 worker nodes, then again your execution time is, is halved as well. So this is just to show you the linear um, scalability with cluster size. With respect to regression, with respect to um, scaling by data size, 
This um, shows linear regression scalability for 10 million, um, for 1 million, 10 million, and 100 million records. You see that it's linear, both on green palm as well as on uh, rock. This is logistic regression, um, scalable, again, uh, linearly. So this is what the example usage looks like. Um, so it's SQL based, as I said. So it's a declarative call within a SQL statement. So this is how you would train a model, um, for example, for linear regression. Here I'm predicting uh, the price of houses, um, given some historical data on houses, including uh, how much is paid in tax, number of bathrooms, and size, for example. So I train that model. Then if I want to do a prediction, I take the result from that, and again I call, and uh, uh, again in my SQL statement, I do a linear, I do a prediction, um, you know, based on the result of the, the training. Right. So it's fairly easy to uh, to use. Then I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the architecture. Um, so many machine learning problems are iterative. In, uh, in nature, and um, the architecture with uh, the way it's set up with, with Madlib is that it's a combination of Python and C++. So we have this high-level iteration controller layer, which is written in Python. The actual core algorithms themselves are implemented in um, in uh, C++, right? And there's a C++ extract extraction layer to the database. The databases are written. So to look at how scalability would work for, in this, ca in this case, uh, linear regression. So the, each algorithm needs to be kind of crafted for a distributed environment. As you guys probably all, all know that you can't just take an algorithm which is written for a single node and automatically have it distributed. Right? You can't do that. So when you're developing a new algorithm in Madlib, you need to think about how to take that algorithm and distri distribute it across to components that sort of be distributed across multiple different nodes. So we take kind of a classic linear <coughs> regression example. Um, think of it as sort of, you know, a straight line fit through a set of data of a higher dimensions than that. Um, and we want to find uh, essentially C, which is we want to find our slopes, if you will. So the way you can solve that is with ordinary least squares. The um, equation looks like this. So when you set up your matrix um, X, you want to kind of distribute your data. So you think, well, why don't I go ahead and distribute it like this? I'll put A and B in worker node 1, C and D in worker node 2. Um, if I do the transpose, then A and B in worker node 1, C and D in worker node 2, um, and then I start doing my multiplication. What I see is that I'm actually operating across segments here because A and C are in different segments. Right? So that's going to increase network traffic. So I don't want to do that. I want to reduce the amount of network traffic and traffic I have between worker nodes. So I need to kind of rethink this um, problem. <coughs> so if you kind of look at the algebra, you can see it's actually decomposable. Right? You can see A squared b squared and a b kind of you could you could separate those out then you could do everything every operation on those in one node um, all the operations on c and d in another node and then just collect them after right so it turns out you can do that using something called like an outer product as opposed to an inner product and the idea then is that you can see all of the operations on the left hand side of the second line could be done in one node. All the operations in the, on the right-hand side could be in another, done in another. So this is kind of the way that we think about decomposing uh, machine learning algorithms for distribution in an MQP environment. Same kind of idea for the second term here. Um, you can take, you can decompose that to do operations in segment one, segment two, or any number of segments, um, bring them together onto the master. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit through this. Um, 
not every data science speaks SQL. Um, so many, many, many data scientists use R. So what we've done is built an R interface for that. So what it allows you to do is use familiar R syntax on your client machine, but have it actually call this distributed MVP database in the back end in order to do scale out R. So the way that works is that you write regular R on the client, um, the converts it to SQL, it executes in the database, that's where the data lives, and then it returns the result set back to the client. Right? So the big data, if you will, is in the database, and um, the result set comes back to the, the client. So just to finish up, um, so what's coming up, we have our 1.9 release, which is coming up you know, within the next uh, month or so. The areas that we focused on here is we've completely refactored the support vector machines, including support for nonlinear kernels. Um, we've added more in the area of um, utilities, as I mentioned, matrix operations, path functions, um, stemming, and some other text uh, analytics kind of uh, functionality. And in the future, there are different potential areas that we're very interested in working on. A lot more in the area of utilities, um, a bunch more predictive uh, models, including those listed here. And in terms of usability, um, thinking about uh, Python API as an example for uh, 2.0 uh, release. So um, thank you very much for your attention. You're more than welcome to participate in the project. Here are some links um, for the website where the software, software is on GitHub and the mailing lists. Um, and uh, check it out. And if you have any questions, send them to the mailing list and we'd be happy to uh, respond. Thank you for your attention. Anyone wants a t-shirt, let me know. Tell her gone. What size is it?